Hi, I'm Matt Kokonen. I'm running for California State Assembly, District 33, here in San Luis Obispo. We're at Cal Poly today looking at some temperature readings for global warming. What I looked at was something very interesting. I thought, how in the world do we get the data on which we base the claim of man-made global warming? Well, there's an interesting source. Climate Reference Net Network Site Information Handbook put out by the government's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They have standards for all the sites on which they base their readings. The reason we're here today is to look at one here in, at Cal Poly and in a, another one also later on, and we'll look at where the sensor is placed and how accurate possibly the readings are. Here we are on site at Cal Poly. Right behind me, the sensor is located in the, in the enclosed area. But I wanted to point out that some of the standards for this siting. Paragraph 2.2.1 talks about where these sensors should be located. They should be far from large bodies of water, for example, then at least 100 meters away. That's 330 feet. Different classes, class five, introduces an error of 5 degrees centigrade, which is about 8 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature sensor is located next to, above an artificial heating source such as a building, rooftop, parking lot, concrete surfaces, that is a huge error. Let's see how the Cal Poly unit measures up to that standard. Come with me. Here we are right next to the sensor. That's an NOAA sensor. The other one here is an older type of a sensor. It used to be the Stevenson sensor. The interesting thing part, the interesting part about it is, look at all these items that are right next to it. They are huge heat sinks. There's an RV that's been here for several years. Not only is it a heat sink, but it's a reflective surface which introduces a huge temperature error to the readings. Behind me in that fenced area are chemical pools, and they're about 120, 130 feet away. Again, they introduce a large error according to the government's own standards on their site information handbook. On the other side, again, we have items that retain heat. They're just a few feet away. And on the other side is a large building which sits on a concrete foundation, concrete slab. That's only about 40 feet away. That introduces an error of several degrees Fahrenheit. And it's very, very sad and disappointing to, for me to realize that the source of this information is erroneous. So if you have false information going in, you get false information out. The old adage, garbage in, garbage out, is still true, most unfortunately. Let's go look at the uh, chemical pool, which is right next to us. Even this location is on gravel. This retains heat. And again, it magnifies the error. As you can see, there are lots of pools in there. All of them collect heat and introduce more error. Let's go to, up to Paso Robles, which is another site in San Luis Obispo County, and see how that site fares. Here we are in Paso Robles, right on Paso Robles Street. It's a very busy street, as you can see. And there's a bridge that goes over Highway 101. Again, a lot of, a lot of uh, traffic here. Let's go closer and see where the sensors are and where the temperature reading is taking place. The sensor, 
sensor is located right behind the fence here. You can possibly see it a little bit through this fencing. And if you, there it is. It sits right on a concrete block. And there's cars that are parked right next to it. The building right next to it. And all of these items introduce a lot of error. In fact, again, looking at the class 5 error, temperature sensor located next to above an artificial heating source such as a building, rooftop, parking lot, or concrete surface introduces an error of at least 5 degrees centigrade, which is about 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So for many, many years, the readings have been high and erroneous. That's most disappointing again. Let's look at it a little bit closer again. Airflow is restricted because of the fence and it sits right on a concrete pad. Huge amount of traffic goes by here. It's a very busy intersection right, right in the middle of Pass Robles. Undoubtedly, this has been going on for many, many years. And again, it's most disappointing that the data is incorrect. This is Matt Token in Ambassador Robles running for the 33rd Assembly District in California.